Good morning, friends. It's Saturday, and I'm so happy to be able to be with you today to share some love and encouragement. I, this is going to be a little bit longer today than the previous um, messages have been because there's something that's powerfully on my heart that I really want to share with you this morning. So I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. This is the very end of this uh, this amazing book. Um, and it's after Jesus has been resurrected and he is with the disciples. I'm not going to put the entire, give the entire backstory here. Really encourage you to go read John 21 after this message is concluded so you can kind of see the bigger picture. So beginning in verse 15, after breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, he was one of the disciples, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Meaning all of these other people. Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Later, Jesus repeated the question again. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And again, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? At this point, Peter was like, what is going on? He said he was kind of grieved and he asked the question of that. Jesus asked the question a third time and he said, Lord, what? You know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus told him again, then feed my sheep. The truth is when you were young, you were able to do as you liked and go wherever you wanted to, essentially, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will direct you and take you where you don't necessarily want to go. Jesus was telling him this to let him know what kind of death he would actually die to glorify God. Then Jesus told him, Peter, follow me. Peter turned around and saw one of the other guys, the disciple that um, had leaned over into Jesus during the Last Supper and asked the Lord, Lord, who among us will betray you? Jesus said, and Peter asked Jesus, what about him? What about this guy? Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You follow me. The point of my reading this to you this morning is because I'm mindful today of a couple of things that I think are important to share with you. We spend a lot of time sometimes as Christians pointing our fingers and measuring our faith against other people's faith walk. We kind of measure our Christianity, our spirit journeys, the authenticity of our faith against other people. And I want to caution us today against doing that. I'm really aware right now of the tensions that exist with this coronavirus, with people having to stay home, businesses closed, people worried about money, and tempers can begin to rise. And this is a time for us to actually increase our time of contemplation and faith and to really have an opportunity to examine our own hearts, our own hearts, not your spouse's heart, not your kids' hearts, not your neighbor's hearts, maybe not even your pastor's heart or your church friends, but to really dig deep into our own hearts. When I was trying to figure out whether or not I should go to seminary and whether I was really called into ministry and what that looked like. I had left, I was about to leave another career where I had been really enjoying that career and, and having some success in it. And I was about to make a big paradigm shift in my life and in my career. And I spent about 18 months trying to talk to people who I thought had some wisdom and really trying to measure what it was that I was supposed to do, praying a lot and trying to listen for God's direction. And in the course of that experience in that time, 
I was speaking with a female friend, a girlfriend who um, I just kind of mentioned that, well, yeah, I'm sort of trying to figure out whether it is I'm supposed to go into ministry. And, and she looked at me and she went, it's like, oh, great. And I said, what's, what's that about? And she goes, you mean like Christian, like a Christian minister, pastor? And I said, well, yeah, it, it was definitely Christian, Christ-centered. And she sat back and she said, let me tell you a story. When my friend was 15 years old, growing up in the southern part of the United States, her mother committed suicide. And at 15, my friend remembered vividly that time in her life and the stresses in her life. And she remembered the funeral service that had been conducted for her now dead mom. And she remembered at the funeral service that there were lots of tears and there was lots of scripture read. And then after the service, there was a time of coffee and cookies, kind of a reception time at this girl's home. She said she remembers looking around and seeing all of these people who had been at the church and they were all consoling one another and remembering the deceased. And my friend was kind of off in a corner by herself in her own home and no one was talking to her. No one from that gathering had come to console her. And the pastor who led the service, who had led the funeral, finally came over to her and put his arm around her and she was kind of crying and feeling alone. And the pastor put his arm around her and he patted her and he said, honey, honey, you should be crying. You should be crying because your mama committed suicide and she's in hell now. Think about that for a second. How in any way was that helpful? How in any way was that representing our risen Lord Jesus Christ? How in any way was that showing kindness? Sometimes, many times, human beings do stupid things. We say stupid things. We can be well-meaning. Have you ever had a time when you've said something that you wish you could just take it back. I am begging you who call yourselves Christians, we who call ourselves Christians, I am begging you today to take a good, hard, deep look at your walk, at how you represent him in this hurting world. Follow him. Leave other people into his care. Pray for other people. But please, measure your words measure your actions against what Jesus truly would want for us to be doing as his representatives. I do not get this right all the time. I am not sitting here telling you that I do because I absolutely do not. And there are plenty of people in my world who have contact with me on a regular basis who can tell you that I stub my toe at this all the time. But God knows deep in my heart, I am trying not to every single day. I ask us to be mindful of love, to lead with love, to approach with love, to share our love in this hurting world in a way that makes him so proud of us. I implore us all today to be mindful and prayerful as we move forward in this uncertain time as we approach others with love and gentleness. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the privilege of being your children. We thank you for the lessons that you teach us on a daily basis. And God, please help us not to cause harm, but to follow you and to leave others in your care, representing you well sharing your love in the world, sharing the gospel in a loving and not a condemning way. Help us to be your representatives with authenticity and kindness. In Jesus' name I pray, 
Amen. If you stuck with it this long, thank you so much for sticking with me for 10 minutes today. And please join us tomorrow for Facebook Live from the Church on the Bayou. If you're available, you can see it later in the day. It'll be at 1030 tomorrow morning. I wish you love today. I wish you peace and joy. Thanks and have a great safe day. Bye-bye.